This is Shivani Patel with Go Engineer. Today we're going to go over creating a solid mesh in plastics and the various troubleshooting options. Let's take a look at this very first screen. I have options to choose volume cooling on the left and a virtual mold on the right. I'm just going to stick with my basic part so I'll click next. The next page has a big selection box where it says cavity. If I had other bodies to mesh like cooling tubes or a mold, those would show up here as well. I want to fill the solid part with plastic, so I'm going to leave it defined as cavity. The third page is where we choose our global mesh. There's a slider that will change the basic triangle size, an option for local refinement, and a gradation slider, which shows how much our mesh grows from refined regions to non-refined regions. I would recommend turning local refinement on in most cases. I'm going to leave it off so that we can see some mesh errors. Now that the mesh has been created, let's look at it in more detail. Notice the holes in this arm, they definitely don't look circular. Since I want to refine my mesh, I have to delete this mesh and choose Set under Refinement. I can multi-select surfaces or individually click them. If I hold Control, I can cancel what I've already selected. At the bottom, I can choose a more refined triangle size, and I'm going to leave the rest of this mesh large. If you've used SOLIDWORKS simulation before, this is very similar to mesh control. Now once it calculates, notice the difference in the mesh between these two holes. And generally, auto will get you good results, and that's about it for mesh refinement. The fourth page gives you clues of errors that will cause inaccuracies in your calculation. Due to my large mesh, I've got a non-watertight model, element intersections, and quite a few non-manifold errors. SOLIDWORKS defines bad and very bad elements on aspect ratio size. Generally, you want your aspect ratio at least below 20. Fifth page, and let's check out this first caution symbol on mesh topology. Here, all of the errors in my part are pointed out. If I click leader line in the command manager, these purple lines show up that point to all of my errors. You could just delete them, but let's look at them closer. You can see that these purple lines are intersecting the broken elements. Clicking delete removes the faces and leaves us with gaps that we now need to fill. This method can be very useful for quickly getting rid of the errors in your mesh. Under fill hole, we have a few options on how we want to fill these gaps we've created. I'll start with the most manual option where you essentially draw out the triangle. As I click these points, the new mesh elements are formed. And hopefully you all just caught the terrible element I just created, which we'll come back to later. Before I create these last two, notice the floating elements here. There's an interesting way to delete them. By going to Mesh Group, I can see closed system meshes. And since the two floating elements are not attached to anything, they show up as separate mesh groups. And I can delete them easily here. Now that those are gone, I can go back in and close off these holes. I'll do it a faster way this time with the automatic fill option. So it seems like everything is good, but let's check the summary first. Just look at that aspect ratio. Definitely something wrong here. I can use mesh topology again to highlight my messed up elements, but this time I don't need to delete these elements, but just alter how I originally drew them. Remember that there was a huge aspect ratio on one of the elements, and these highlighted ones look relatively normal. If I go to Mesh Quality and have it highlight all of the elements with an aspect ratio above 20, I get this line-shaped one that I drew earlier, remember? I can fix this with these node options here. Using a Just node, I can move the boundaries of this thin element. First, I'll show you an intersection error. Basically, just don't let the lines cross. Now let's move the secondary node as well. So I've adjusted these nodes, but this is a very funny looking mesh. I could leave it like this, but that funny shape would probably still have an undesirable aspect ratio. So let's use this other neat option called Merge Node. A quick highlight of these two points brings these nodes together, fixing my error. There are plenty of other node options available to manually adjust your mesh in this fashion. A quick check on my summary shows that I have some errors that I probably wouldn't want to skip in a project where I cared about accurate results. Remember that these errors are largely due to the oversized mesh I chose initially. I'm going to go in and fix the worst of these problems, then show you the last bit of meshing. Okay, so here's the sixth page. You can choose a three-dimensional mesh of your choosing. The seventh page just requires a quick transform. If you have errors at this page, you likely need to go and refine your mesh or fix your mesh errors. Eighth page can also be left at default in this situation. Once I click OK, my manual mesh is complete. You can even see a little green check mark telling me that my solid mesh has been created. This has been Shivani Patel with Go Engineer. I hope this video has helped you better troubleshoot your SolidWorks plastics meshes. Mm -hmm.